Welcome to the May 2013 Cambridge House Investment Conference. I'm Tara Sweeter, corresponding for Small Cap Power. Today's experts, analysts, and research reporters will be answering all your questions about what is going on in the world. From China to resources, we have it all. Stay tuned. A man who needs no introduction, I'm sure, mercenary geologist, Mickey Fulp. Now, Mickey, tell me about the U.S. There has been a huge spike. Do you think it, the U.S. is getting ahead of itself fundamentally, and is a correction due? Well, certainly the U.S. major markets, we're seeing record highs uh, in a time when, in May, when it should be sell and may go away. What's up with that? Uh, well this is the next bubble in the series of bubbles in my opinion so now we have an equities bubble especially the major markets um, so yes we're very overdue for a correction there's a correction coming I'm not going to tell you when it's going to happen but but US markets major stock markets are clearly overbought at this time people talk about all these bubbles first of all what was the last bubble the junior space the rare earth element bubble was uh, was that was huge and my subscribers and I made a lot of money off that because we got in quickly and we got out. Okay, so now it's equities. So you made a lot of money on rare earths, now it's equities. Do you suggest that investors get into equities? Well, major markets are overbought, so why would you want to buy now? That'd be buying high and you're going to end up selling low, which is commonly what uh, uh, the retail market does is they come in at the top when, when uh, when you should be a contrarian. Money is made in this market as a contrarian. So you buy things when they're unloved, unwanted, unknown, and undervalued. Simple as that. The okay, point. let's get the secret out of him. So what's the next bubble that you are investing in and telling your investors at Mercenary Geologist to invest in? Well, I'm picking away at uranium stocks right now. That's my long-term contrarian. Why? Why? Because no one wants uranium stocks. And, and the long-term fundamentals of the uranium business are totally compelling and I can't tell you if it's going to turn in a year or two years but I know that we have better times ahead for uranium because that is the future for baseload electricity for the foreseeable future. Now we've got the gold guru Jay Taylor. His topic today was very interesting. The title was Why No Animal Spirits? What did you talk about? Well, animal spirits is a, a phrase that was coined by John Maynard Keynes, the great economist from England. And his theory was that uh, government can just spend money uh, and we can just keep everybody optimistic and then we never have to have any recessions. We never have to have any business downturns. Uh, and that's a, that's a nice idea. We'd all like to be able to do what we want to do when we want to do it and, and be optimistic and happy all the time. The problem with that is it isn't true, Tara. The problem is that you have to save, you have to work, and that's how you become prosperous. And so the, uh, the, talk, the talk that I gave today sort of refuted the notion and explained why the public in general isn't all that optimistic about the future. In fact, the real uh, earnings, the earnings of Americans has, has really declined, and I think it's true of Canadians as well. If you take into effect the cost of living, so people are having a tougher time of it. And so the reason there's no animal spirits is because reality is really trumping this notion that we can just be happy and, and dream and, and, and be ever happy ever after. Okay, but you hear that topic a lot about the fear factor. Do you think that plays a big role in this? Yeah, I think the fear factor is, is very real, but I think it's based on reality. I, I don't think the fear factor is something that can be overcome by a lot of happy talk. In the short term, it can be, but longer term, it really matters because if you don't have savings and you don't have a, an ability to put food on your table, you're not going to be very happy. And I think, unfortunately, that's the way a lot of uh, life is going for a larger and larger number of American people. And that, you know, really uh, plays into the hands of gold and gold investors because in the meantime, to try to overcome that, that hardship, the uh, policymakers are printing enormous amounts of money, dollars out of nothing, which means that gold uh, goes up relative to the dollar. Uh, to, to the dollar. So in dollar terms, gold goes up and people protect themselves by owning gold longer term. I was talking earlier about the spike in the U.S. economy. Now, 
we don't want to hash that out again, but what does that mean exactly for Canadian markets? Well, I think we've seen a spike in the, uh, in the stock market, but we have not seen a spike in growth in the U.S. economy. And what that means, I think, in general is there are, there are fewer and fewer people that have money that are able to buy stocks, and they bid up the price of the stocks. But I'm not really bullish on the stock market longer term. I'm very bearish, actually, but I'm very bullish on gold. And I think right now we're looking at some of the worst sentiment in gold that I have ever seen. And as a contrary investor, I've turned extremely bullish on gold. I think we're very near a bottom if we haven't seen it. So gold and gold shares, I think, are going to, make, are going to actually revive the animal spirits of people who are in that sector over the next six months to a year. Revive the animal spirit by buying gold and precious metals, would you say? Absolutely, and silver might even be better than gold. Uh, in right? terms, of, I think in terms of the upside potential, I think silver uh, has the potential to be much better than gold. But they're both, they're both good. I would want to own both. I think that's the first time I've ever heard you say that, Jay. Well, I like silver too. I mean, it's, a, it's an industrial metal, and one of the reasons that I'm not as bullish as some of my colleagues on silver is that I'm not bullish on the economy. If you believe that the economy is going to grow really rapidly, then I would be more bullish than I am on silver. But there's such a shortage of silver, and I think silver is also a monetary metal, and it's a metal that I want to own in part because I'm not as worried about having it confiscated by the government as I am gold, which I think is also a concern that people need to be aware of. Always make sure to do your own research. Subscribe to Small Cap Power. For now, I'm Tara Sweeter. Get more investing advice from our roster of experts, including Rick Rule, Mickey Fulk, Eric Coffin, Brent Cook, Steve Palmer, Tom Calandra, and James West by visiting smallcappower.com forward slash experts. Smallcappower.com, investment ideas and research.